Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a good night. I am Patrick. This is Storytelling Imperfectly, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. I am Patrick, and I hope you like what you see. We're going to do another segment of Truth or Hoax. That's right, guys. We're going to delve deep into something. We're going to dive in. We're going to breaststroke around. Strangely enough, this actually does have a boob that plays into it. So stick around. Things are going to get hairy and weird here today on Storytelling Imperfectly as we try to figure out whether or not the Patterson-Gimlin footage is truth or hoax. Back in 1967, guys, on a beautiful, beautiful day, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were horseback riding through Bluff Creek in California when suddenly, out of nowhere, appeared this. Bigfoot? Holy crap! I mean, that legitimately looks like honest-to-God Bigfoot footage. In fact, one could argue 110% that it is Bigfoot. That Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin filmed a true-life Sasquatch that day. Because, honest-to-God, this footage that we just watched is the best Bigfoot footage to ever come out of anywhere. It's, it's really hard to believe some of the horrible footage that's coming out and that Super Bigfoot enthusiasts, I mean, people who want to believe so desperately that they're even willing to overlook the fact that it is truly a man in a suit, footage is out there. I mean, you just Google Bigfoot footage on YouTube, and 99.9% .9 of the footage you see is going to be completely garbage. It's just fake. It's just, it just is. And it's done for entertainment purposes. It's, do, it's done so people can get their 15 minutes of fame. But this footage, I don't know, guys. This one, I don't know. And I guess that's why we need to talk about the Bluff Creek Bigfoot, or Patty, as she's known, because she was actually named after Roger Patterson's wife, Patricia. So he calls her Patty. Now, reasons that this footage is real. Let's cover that first. Let's, let's go into the true side of it, that it really, really happened. One, Bob Gimlin is not the kind of guy that would lie. In my personal opinion, after watching you know, uh, interview after interview with Bob Gimlin, if Bob is lying, then, uh, I'm not saying he's incapable of lying, but if he's lying, he's doing it very well. And has for, what, 60 years now? I, I don't buy it. Plus, Bob signed off his rights to the Patterson footage, Patterson-Gimlin footage, years ago. He got tired of the limelight, he got tired of the reporters, he got tired of all the questions. He didn't want to talk about it anymore. And he's never gone around trying to convince people that what he saw that day was real. So the fact is, is that either Bob Gimlin is lying his tail off in a so convincing way that he's managed to fool everybody for 60 years, or he was tricked himself, or Bob Gimlin saw Bigfoot that day. But that's one reason why I think this footage is true. If we look at the actual footage itself, I mean, nowadays, guys, we can slow it down. We can blow it up to 4K. I can't see a seam. I don't see anything that indicates that that is a man in a suit. I don't see how, when the neck moves, when it looks back, there's no creasing. There's no anything that it would do with a suit. Guys, this was filmed in 67. And, and truthfully, another reason I believe and put this in the truth column is that that footage is on 16 millimeter film. So... It's been studied. I mean, the footage itself has been looked at by film experts. And those film experts say, unequivocally, that what you are seeing on that film is there. They actually filmed it. What it is, be it man or beast, it's there. So, then we have to go, okay, well, it's 1967. Guys, they didn't use CGI, okay? There wasn't computer graphics. They didn't put this into the film. It's a physical object. So that means it's a practical effect. If it's fake, it is a practical effect. And looking at it over and over again, stabilized what we just watched in 4K, I, I, I think they filmed a Bigfoot. 
I mean, it looks pretty freaking good, considering that in 67, Planet of the Apes hadn't even come out yet, guys. Planet of the Apes, starring Charlton Heston, uh, Robbie McDowell as one of the chimps, all right, was top-notch special effects in its day. Top-notch special effects. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas looks like garbage. If we look at the uh, Planet of the Apes today, 1969 is when it came out. Those suits do not look like real monkeys. It looks like dudes in a suit, you know. But back then, it looked great. People were like, whoa, I'm mind blown. It's Dr. Zayas. It's that, it's in the chimp. Rodney McDowell's that chimp. I can tell by his voice. And everybody was like, whoa, I could, that, you're right. That is Rodney McDowell, my guy. You maniacs, you blew it up. Anyway, the point being is, is that they could not replicate this. In a million-dollar budget Hollywood movie, they could not make a suit that looked as good as Patty does strolling across that ground. And that leads me to the other reasons why it's true. Look how it moves, guys. Everything about it is sure. There's no, I'm a human trying to walk this way. It looks like an animal that has been walking that way for its entire life. It's very sure in how it carries itself. Its movements are smooth and locomotive, which also leads me to look at the terrain that they're on. This thing is cutting through the terrain pretty quickly for a person in a freaking suit. I, I don't but I just look at it and go, man, that is incredible footage. And then also, guys, if you look how Patty is walking in that film, she really is walking um, like uh, just one foot is one foot is certainly always on the ground. And when she steps, you can see the muscles in her leg quiver. The impact, this is a heavy animal. If you're watching it walk, it's a heavy animal. It, it's just really uncanny. I just think that it is pretty impressive. And remember how I told you there is actually a boob in this? We're slowing down the footage here, okay? Watch what I put up, okay? There you go. If you see the arm moving forward frame by frame, there is a point in time right here-ish that the, the arm, the far arm moving forward, catches the animal, the Patty's boob, breast, and it lifts and falls back down individually from her body. If it was a suit and it was all connected by fibers and everything, the whole thing would lift up if it was moved or this. And that's not what happens. So, truth. There's a lot to this. Also, guys, the fact that, like I said, none of these people ever made money on it. Even Roger Patterson never made money off this. In fact, if anything, he probably lost money off this as to where 20 people tied him up in litigation saying that, he owed them money, which we'll talk about that in a little bit too. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that Roger Patterson never made any money off this film. Really. Bob Giblin never made money off this film, you know, and, and just finally today, you know, and well, not right now because of COVID and all this, the world and being the way it is. But within recent last few years, Bob Giblin at like 90 years old has come out of the woodworks and started going to like cons, Bigfoot, you know, stuff and being invited to speak at Bigfoot conferences and stuff. And I, I'm happy for him because the man caught hell for years and years and years. I mean, people calling his house night and day, calling him a liar, attacking him, attacking his wife. Bob Gimlin's wife worked at a, as a teller at the local bank in their town and people just harassed her there. I mean, the woman was, you know, when, you, when, when you're so cuckoo bird that you go to a person's wife's workplace to ask her about Bigfoot, you're probably crossing a line. And that goes with the uh, news people, you know? I mean, they were just hounded by the press and everything else. And so, so Bob Gimlin wanted nothing to do with it. And again, that brings me back to the truth column because it just doesn't make sense why this was going on uh, as far as Bob Gimlin and R Roger Patterson. If this whole goal was to fake a Bigfoot thing, then they succeeded, but to what gain? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't understand what would be the gain. Now that we've talked a little bit, though, about the points of why I think this is real, um, and, and there's, I think that there's more to say about it, guys. I mean, I do, but we're going to just beat a dead horse. I mean, I can talk about the fact that this thing has muscle movement. You can see muscles in its back. You can see a calf muscle. Um, also, the reason I do want to address this before we move to, to hoax, okay?
Human beings have two arches in their feet. We have a transverse arch and a longitudinal arch. Okay, we, we just found out through medical science in the last few years as well that the, we used to think that the transverse arch is what kept us walking and doing the things that we could do. But that's not true at all. Um, what it is is that both arches have purposes. One allows us to run. The longitudinal arch allows us to run. The transverse arch allows us to walk. So bipedal creatures can have a transverse arch and walk. Patty is not running in that video. Now, she's moving with intent. You know, that creature that we see there is moving across the terrain at a very good rate, but it never breaks it to a run. And the reason is, is that the footprints, the iconic footprints of Patty that Bob Gimlin's had pictures with and Roger Patterson took pictures with, I'll put them up. You know, you guys are going to see them. They look perfect, even. They almost look like somebody had drawn them out, and then, you know, it, it, it almost looks so fake. And if you look at how flat the feet are, even in the video when Patty's walking, at one point in time her foot lifts straight up and you can just see how flat it is. Well, that could certainly be explained away with calluses. I mean, if a creature's walking around completely barefoot all the time in rough terrain like in Bluff Creek, it's going to have calluses on its feet. There's no longitudinal arch on Patty's foot. On the footprints taken from Bluff Creek, there's no latitudinal arch. There's just a transverse arch, which certainly means that Patty could walk perfectly fine. She just couldn't run. And maybe that's true for all Sasquatch. I don't know, I'm not a Sasquatch expert. Never met one, never seen his feet. But I do say that that's science. I mean, you can't get around the fact that human beings have two arches and we now know that one arch allows us to run while the other arch allows us to walk upright like human beings do, bipedal creatures. So saying that Patty's feet look a little fake or the footprints look like they were basically drawn and just like a clay stamp, you know, like somebody had you know, fake feet on and just made the footprints. Well, there's a reason that it could absolutely be that it has no longitudinal arch. Because Patty, like I said, she never runs in the film. So now that we've covered that, that's all Patrick's points of views of why this could be true. Let's cover why this could be fake. Roger Patterson was known to be kind of a, a cad. Uh, uh, he was known to be a scallywag. A, he was a good man. For all accounts, he was a decent human being. He wasn't a bad person, but he was known to scam people. He was the kind of person who would say, hey, let me borrow some cash and then never pay you back, even though he said he was going to. That doesn't make him a bad person. It makes him a kind of an ass, but it doesn't make him a bad person. Um, all his friends that, that knew him knew that about him and would still loan him money. So that also speaks volumes about Roger, is that... He was the kind of guy that his friends were like, oh, that Roger, yeah, here you go, man. Here's 200 bucks, you know, and knew that they weren't ever going to get it back. But that's because Roger was actually a decent human being, you know. I mean, if the guy was a jerk as well as not being a debtor, I doubt that people would have said nice things about him. Now, he died, I think, in 1975 of cancer. So he is no longer alive or among us to be able to question about this. But until the day he died, he did say that Patty was real. However, on his deathbed, he apologized to Bob Gimlin. I don't know what he was apologizing for. It could be interpreted that he apologized to Bob Gimlin because he had tricked Bob Gimlin. Maybe he did trick Bob. I don't know. Again, I, I wasn't there. On the other hand, he could just feel bad because these guys did go through a whole lot of hell saying they saw Bigfoot. I mean, you got to understand, 1967, these two dudes were off riding around in the backcountry playing cowboy, you know, um, that kind of behavior was kind of frowned on at that point in time. And um, not, not only that, but then when the footage came forward, when they did finally present the Roger Patterson Gimlin footage, Patty's footage, uh, the world harassed them endlessly until, their, until, obviously, Roger Patterson's death. And now it's still, by the way, the film... Nobody knows where it's at. It's tied up in litigation. I mean, it's sitting somewhere. The actual film it still exists. It's around, but it's been tied up in litigation for years and years and years. Now, remember, Bob Giblin signed over his rights a long time ago, but Roger Patterson's widow still retains some rights to the footage, and it is tied up in court to this day. So nobody can even get their hands on the original footage anymore. However, again, is it possible that 
Roger, let's go back. Is it possible that Roger Patterson tricked Bob Giblin? Saul kind of a nice guy, a, a credible guy, and he knew that he had to have at least one credible person there in Bluff Creek that day to sell this. Um, he had written, Roger Patterson had written a book about the abominable, uh, abominable snowman. So he most certainly was a believer in Sasquatch and Bigfoot. And in fact, the camera that he used was a rented camera. He had rented that camera to shoot a documentary. What about Bigfoot? And that kind of makes my, you know, hair stand up on the back of my neck and me go, yeah, I might have to call BS on this one, guys. Because if you're there searching for Bigfoot, what's the, what's the odds that you're going to find Bigfoot? Well, a lot of people go searching for Bigfoot and never find anything. However, after thinking about it for a minute, it makes total sense that a guy looking for Bigfoot found Bigfoot. I mean, who, who would find Bigfoot first? I mean, I imagine if Bigfoot ever truly gets proven to be real, it's going to be because of people that are looking for him. And it's going to be happenstance. You know, Bigfoot's not going to just show up and, to vote one day and find out that he hasn't registered. So, damn, I guess I need to go back to the woods. That's not going to happen. So, it makes more sense that that was what was going on. But it also kind of stinks. Something stinks in Denmark, you know. So, there's that. And I'm going to put that in the hoax column because, you know, you got to think about it, guys. He told, Ro he told Roger Patterson approached Bob Gimlin was like, hey, man, you know, let's go out and look for Bigfoot kind of thing. And they did. And then when they went home after having no success, before Bob even got unpacked, Roger called him back up because he had just received word that thousand, like a thousand footprints, Sasquatch footprints have been found a few days prior in the Bluff Creek area on a construction site, like on a logging road. There were guys up there working and they came to work the next day and there's thousand footprints up there. So um, some Bigfoot guys, some researchers at that time period um, called up Roger Patterson because they knew that he, they had association with him and knew that he was interested in this and then told him, hey, we found a bunch of Bigfoot footprints in Bluff Creek. So Roger went and rented this, rented this camera in the hopes of going up to this logging road and filming the, documenting the footprints, as well as making just a short documentary on Sasquatch. But by the time he'd gotten there, the footprints had been gone. They had been washed away through rain or whatever, you know. And uh, he, but, but they decided to stay. So when he called up Bob Gimlin and said, hey, go to Bluff Creek, don't unpack. And Bob was like, eh, okay, man. Because Bob Ginlan was the kind of guy that liked riding horses out in the woods with his buddy. And so he said, sure, man, I'm, I'm down. You know, let's go. So they went back out there with three horses. And they were leading them, you know, along. And, of course, that's when they, uh, I think on the third day, they were there for three days. And on the third day, um, that's when they got the footage. Now, I'm going to put this in the hooks column. I think it's mighty convenient. The reason that Roger Patterson only has a little bit of footage of Patty is because he said he was on the last reels of his film when it happened. Um, he also said that when it came out, it scared the hell out of him. It scared the horses. Bob Gimlin, being a consummate horseman, was able to keep the horses under control, even though they were rear rearing and bucking. He rode them off to a safe distance, and so he could turn around and get a better look at Patty. And then Roger got up off the ground. Apparently, his horse actually fell down on him, hurt his leg even. Um, he got the camera out. The camera was on the wrong frame rate. And then he shot the footage that we all see, which is shaky and everything else. But again, he didn't foresee us ever having the technology to stabilize this footage or anything else, which you could put in the truth column because now we can. It looks still pretty damn good if it's a fake. However, it is convenient that he only had a little bit of film left and that Roger was the closest to it and Bob rode off and could see, only see it from a distance. And that kind of leads me to go, okay, you know, they used poor Bob Gimlin as a patsy and uh, because he was naive and also honest and convincing. So if Bob went out of the woods and said, hey, I saw a Bigfoot and he really believed he did. It's more believable on the news and the media. Lastly, guys, to put into the fake column, of course, is Bob Hieronymus and uh, the guy who said he made the suit. Bob Hieronymus has come forward over the years and said he was the guy inside the suit. He was Patty. Bob Hieronymus has his Bigfoot walk down. I mean, that dude is a Bigfoot walking SOB. It, it, I could totally see it. And he's naturally a pretty big guy. 
And, you know, his story is, is that, you know, he got into the suit. Roger Patterson asked him to do it. Um, that what you see is what you get kind of thing. He waited and that's that. And then he came out and walked across the thing. So Bob Hieronymus has said that, you know, he came out and did all this. He also, Bob Hieronymus only has one eye. He has a glass eye. And so when he turns and he looks towards the camera, the reason he didn't turn all the way was because the glass eye would actually shine in the lens of the camera. And so he was told by Roger Patterson to only turn his head a certain distance. I don't know. I mean, Bob Hieronymus was actually on a, a, on a uh, television show, um, lie detector, and it came back that he was telling the truth. So we're going to put that, that, you know, pretty strong evidence towards it being a hoax. He walks like Patty. He says he was there. He's produced the suit that he said he wore. He says that it looks more filled out because he was wearing football pads. Um, he can do the walk like nobody's business. And he's taken a lie detector test and passed it. Not that that is inconclusive evidence, you know, or absolutely conclusive evidence that Bob Hieronymus is telling the truth. It just means that he maybe believes that he is. Or, like many other people who have fooled a lie detector, he did just that. He fooled a lie detector. I don't know. I, I will say this, guys. If you watch that footage again, okay, and I challenge you to do it over and over and over, I am very skeptical again to most things. I don't believe most things are true, all right? But it doesn't stop the fact that this footage is incredible. It's either an incredible feat of special effects that was accomplished in 1967 that by some nobodies out in the middle of Bluff Creek in the wilderness and made it look perfect. I mean, the hair shines, guys. It looks like a real animal. I mean, even people who have walked, like, like put on suits to pretend to be animals in Hollywood movies say this thing moves. That they can't understand how this is fake. Looking at the footage themselves, and these people do this for a living. So you're asking me to believe that Bob Hieronymus and Roger Patterson and some no-name makeup artist at the time decided to put together a suit that fooled Bob Gimlin and has fooled the world for the last 60-some-odd years. Maybe. I mean, stranger things have happened, right? I mean, we live in a strange world. But regardless of all that, I'd love to hear what you think, guys. Truth or hoax? Is the Robert Patterson, uh, Gimlin, Bob Gimlin film really a Sasquatch? I mean, is that what we're looking at here? Because if so, it's amazing. And uh, what I would really like to do is get a hold of the original film. Because and with the technology we have, I mean, what you guys watched here is still just a copy of the film that has been stabilized and put in the high definition. I would really like to get the original film when it's not in litigation, which will probably be until everybody's dead that's involved in this. But I would like to get the original film and boost it to 2K or 4K and really take a good look at Patty. Stabilize it and have a real good go. But it will never explain until, until I think Hollywood multi-million dollar special effect company can produce the same thing that we see on that film with a practical effect, I'm going to lean towards truth. I think that Robert Patterson and Bob Giblin filmed a real-life Sasquatch that day. That's my personal belief. Whatever you believe is fine, guys. We all believe different things. But regardless, I'd love to hear what you believe in the comment section below. Also, guys, if you've been here this long, please smash in that subscribe button. Keep coming back and hanging out with me. I love your company, and I can't grow this channel without you. I need your help. So please share this video, tell your friends about it, and no matter what, guys, smash in that like button. Make it blue. It really helps me out, and it's a good thing to do. I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Gosh, I'm ridiculous. Guys, hit that bell while you're at it. While you're doing all this clicking, get the notifications. Keep coming back and hanging out with me. But that's it for Patrick today. I am out of here, and I will see you guys in the next video.